Mark chapter 1, verse 4 states, John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. This verse introduces us to John the Baptist, a man whose life and ministry were divinely appointed to prepare the way for the coming Messiah. His message was clear, uncompromising, and essential. Repentance is the pathway to the remission of sins. In this simple but profound declaration, we find the heart of the gospel, an unyielding call to turn from sin and to seek the mercy of God. John's role as the forerunner of Christ was not just about announcing the coming of Jesus, it was about preparing the people to receive him. This preparation was not ceremonial, it was moral and spiritual. The people of Israel were steeped in religious ritual, but their hearts were far from God. They needed to be awakened to the reality of their sin, and John was the instrument God used to bring about that awakening. His message of repentance was not a new doctrine. It was the reiteration of what the prophets had been declaring for centuries. Yet, it was presented with an urgency that could not be ignored. Repentance, as John preached it, was not merely about feeling remorse for past actions. It was about a radical change of direction, a complete transformation of one's life. This kind of repentance demands a total surrender to God's will, a turning away from sin and a turning toward righteousness. It is the recognition that we are utterly incapable of saving ourselves and are in desperate need of God's grace. Without this repentance, there can be no remission of sins, no forgiveness, no reconciliation with God. The wilderness where John carried out his ministry is symbolic of the spiritual barrenness of the people. It represents a place of desolation, isolation, and need. Just as the physical wilderness was a harsh and unforgiving environment, so too was the spiritual condition of Israel a people who had wandered far from God, living in the desolation of sin. John's presence in the wilderness was a call to return, a summons to leave behind the comfort of false religion and face the stark reality of their need for a savior. John's baptism was an outward sign of an inward change. It was a public declaration of repentance, a visible expression of a heart turned toward God. But this baptism was not an end in itself. It pointed forward to the greater baptism that Jesus would bring, a baptism not merely of water, but of the Holy Spirit and fire, as described in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John's baptism was a shadow of the greater work that Christ would accomplish through his death and resurrection. The remission of sins that John preached could only be fully realized through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Repentance, therefore, is not a one-time act, but an ongoing process in the life of a believer. It is the continual turning away from sin and the continual turning toward God. It is the daily acknowledgement of our need for God's grace and mercy. As believers, we are called to live lives marked by repentance, a life that bears fruit in keeping with repentance, as John admonished in Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. This fruit is evident in a life that is characterized by holiness, obedience, and a deep love for God and His Word. The message of repentance is not popular in our world today. It goes against the grain of human pride and self-sufficiency. It requires humility, a recognition of our sinfulness, and a willingness to submit to God's authority. But it is the only path to true freedom. Without repentance, there can be no forgiveness. And without forgiveness, there can be no salvation. The refusal to repent is, in essence, a rejection of God's grace. 
It is a willful choice to remain in sin, to cling to the darkness rather than stepping into the light. John's preaching was not soft or accommodating. It was direct, confrontational, and unyielding. He did not sugarcoat the truth or soften his message to avoid offending his audience. He understood that the stakes were too high. Eternal life or eternal damnation. His message was a wake-up call to a people who had become complacent in their sin. He knew that without repentance, they were doomed to face the wrath of God. As it is written in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Repentance is the only way to escape this death and receive the gift of eternal life. The call to repentance is as relevant today as it was in John's time. We live in a world that is steeped in sin, a world that celebrates what God condemns, a world that has turned its back on its creator. The sins that John confronted, pride, idolatry, immorality, and rebellion, are the same sins that plague our society today. The message of repentance is desperately needed in our churches, in our communities, and in our own lives. Far too many Christians today have embraced a form of godliness while denying its power, as 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 warns. They claim the name of Christ, but live in a way that is indistinguishable from the world. They have allowed sin to take root in their lives, deceiving themselves into believing that they can continue in sin while still enjoying the blessings of salvation. But this is a lie from the pit of hell. True repentance means a complete break with sin, a life that is set apart for God, and a heart that is fully surrendered to His will. John's message was not just for the lost, it was for the people of God. It was a call to purity, to holiness, to live lives that are pleasing to God. This call has not changed. The church today must return to the preaching of repentance, for without it, there can be no revival, no renewal, no true move of God's Spirit. The church must be a place where sin is confronted where the truth is proclaimed without compromise, where believers are called to live lives worthy of the calling they have received, as Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 exhorts. Repentance is the foundation of the Christian life. It is the entry point to the kingdom of God, but it is also the pathway to spiritual growth and maturity. As believers, we must examine our lives daily, allowing the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin and lead us to repentance. We must be willing to lay down our pride, our desires, our agendas, and submit fully to the Lordship of Christ. Only then can we experience the fullness of the life that God has for us, a life of peace, joy, and victory over sin. The remission of sins that John preached is available to all who repent and believe in the gospel. This is the good news that we are called to proclaim, but it begins with a sober recognition of the bad news. We are all sinners in need of a savior. As it is written in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The cross is where the justice of God meets the mercy of God where the penalty for sin is paid in full, and where the door to eternal life is opened for all who will enter through repentance and faith. The message of repentance is not just a call to turn away from sin, it is a call to turn toward God. It is a call to embrace the new life that Christ offers, to walk in the Spirit, and to live in the freedom that comes from knowing that our sins are forgiven and that we are reconciled to God. This is the message that John the Baptist proclaimed in the wilderness, and it is the message that we must proclaim today. 
Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. There is no other way to enter into that kingdom but through the narrow gate of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. The preaching of repentance is not for the faint of heart. It is a message that will offend, that will divide, that will cause many to turn away. But it is the truth, and the truth must be spoken, no matter the cost. We live in a time when the church is being pressured to conform to the world, to soften its message, to compromise its standards. But we must stand firm. We must hold fast to the word of God, and we must proclaim the message of repentance with boldness and without apology. John the Baptist was a voice crying out in the wilderness, calling people to prepare the way of the Lord. That voice is still needed today. We are called to be that voice in our generation, to call people to repentance, to point them to the cross, and to prepare the way for the return of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us not shrink back from this calling. Let us be bold, let us be unashamed, and let us proclaim the message of repentance with the same fervour and urgency as John the Baptist. The time is short, the need is great, and the stakes are eternal. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand.